Hi all, welcome back to the channel, Cryptic here. And today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial slash guide on how to put an NVMe SSD into your PlayStation 5 and expand the storage with the upcoming firmware update uh, by Sony uh, that's currently in the beta phase. Um, I've seen comments, videos, etc. saying that it's complicated, it's too hard, Sony's made things difficult. Um, other than not having a list of the compatible drives, a definitive list, um, there is a definitive set of specifications which makes a large variety of drives like this one here being the Gigabyte Aorus 7000 S drive um, compatible and ready to go um, into the PlayStation 5 NVMe slot. So the only thing you literally need is obviously a PS5, a compatible NVMe SSD and a screwdriver. Now, with this one, if you watched my previous video that I did um, last week, uh, the specific this meets the specifications for the upgrade. Um, you need a minimum uh, read speed of 5,500 megabytes a second. Uh, this has up to uh, 7,000 megabytes a second of reads and writes of 6,850 megabytes a second. And it has a heatsink, which does not exceed the depth of the NVMe slot in the PS5, so it will fit with the cover on, screwed on beautifully. So without further ado, what I will do, I will unbox this for you to show you what it looks like, and then we'll get this open and I'll show you the step-by-step -step guide on how to get this upgrade done easily. All right, so there's the drive itself. You just slide the packaging out like that. Now this is the part that's a little difficult because it is a tight fit, but we can get it. There we go. And that's the drive right there. As you can see, it's got a, a, a thin design for the heatsink, which is the preferable type of heatsink if you can get one that is within the measurement spe specifications. Like I said, Sony recommends a total thickness of 11.25 millimeters for the drive. This is 11.40, but it does fit, which you will see in this video, it fitting with the cover on, no issues whatsoever. All right, this is the two terabyte model, all right? Now, if you are the type of person who is going to put their custom heatsink on a compatible NVMe SSD, I would recommend going with obviously the thin design, but also if you can see here, it's mounted by screws. You do not want to go with the ones that use the silicon or rubber bands. The reason for that is heat is produced out of this slot. Silicon and rubber degrade over time with heat. So they will crack and then the pressure keeping the thermal pads and heatsink together will start to separate, which then the heat dissipation would not be as good. So make sure whichever one you end up going with for a heat sink, they're the screw mounting type, all right? And if you can get one that's double-sided like this, even better. If not, a single-sided, as long as all your memory modules are on one side, that should be fine, okay? So this is the drive we're gonna go with. Now, with that out of the way, I'll pop this back in its box temporarily for now, just to keep it safe while we get the PlayStation 5 open. Now. With the PlayStation 5, it's quite easy. You've probably seen a million videos on this. It's sliding the side panel off. So what you wanna do, you wanna use your left hand here, which I'm pointing to the Blu-ray drive, right? As support, because the part you want to pull up and slide is the directly opposite corner, which is this one here. Place your hand here, right? Raise it up a bit of force. If this is the first time you're doing it, it may take a little bit and you think, hey, it might break. Don't worry, it won't. Don't do the full tearing motion, it's wrong. It's a, it's a pull up and slide to the left. Be gentle, take your time. Don't be worried if it doesn't come off the first couple times. Be patient with it, it will come off. Heat, obviously, contracts and expands materials, so it might be a little bit tight, especially if you've just finished gaming with it and you're deciding to open up the side panel to either do cleaning or maintenance for dust, etc. So if we pull up here, and then using my right hand, pull up, and we will slide it right off there we go see that it's popped perfectly and off that's the side panel off no scratches nothing okay don't be afraid it is a very durable plastic all right it's very flexible nothing's gonna happen to this for you to break this you literally have to be forcing it to bend it break it etc so don't worry about that now we get here that is your nvme slot right there one screw to access it said screwdriver these aren't hard to use or find right what we're gonna do we're gonna get the crosshead screwdriver and we're gonna place it here and we're going to 
unscrew this. Now, the first time you're doing it, it is a bit stiff, obviously, because it's factory screwed on. Um, so don't be afraid to apply a little bit of pressure, but make sure you have the right size. This isn't too small. This isn't too big. All right, you'll know right away, as soon as you put it into the crossheads, it will lock into place. It won't spin around uh, de-threading the screw, okay? Once that's done, we remove the screw. That's it there. Place that to the side so we don't lose it. Now, this is the slot itself. Now, when you're also moving this off the first time, it will be like it's stuck on. You'll think it's glued or you think that you're gonna bend or break this, don't be. You see the little air vents right here, hopefully they're coming out in the camera, okay? You can use them on the side to help lift up the slot itself. All right, to slide it off. There we go, see, they've come off now. Boom, that's the top panel removed. And now we've exposed the NVMe Gen 4 slot right there, all right? As you can see, 30, 42, 60, 80, and 110, those are all the varying lengths for the NVMe drive. If you can see the slot, you've got a thinner connector and a larger connector. Now, what we will do, we'll grab that drive that I put aside earlier pull it out again and we will slide it in now here we go thinner side here towards the disk drive side and the larger pins towards you if you're orientating it this way but they should match up pins to pins okay let's place this in here All right and what we want to do support on the left a little bit finger on here don't need too much just wiggle it wiggle it and a nice satisfying click. Now, as you'll notice, it does stick up a bit. That is normal. What then you want to do is grab your same screwdriver that I showed you earlier. The screw here that's on uh, the 110, we wanna remove that. Again, this will also be a bit stiff the first time you wanna unscrew this, okay? Don't be worried about it being a bit stiff. Just put a little bit of pressure and we'll start unscrewing. And then what you want to do, you want to use this screw with the um, metal silver washer here that you can see. If I can pull this up, this little guy, right, is a little spacer. You want to place this on the hole that your drive is now compatible with in length to help support and screw everything down. All right, so let me place this back here. Sorry about my big hands if they're in the way. Slide this along to the hole. All right. Just raise yours up a little bit as you do it. There we go. So it falls straight into the hole there. Perfect. Put your drive on top. Grab your little screw. Put that in the slot there. Yep. And all you want to do is screw it down. Okay, now I've turned that, it's not turning anymore. I'm not gonna put any more force on it, right? I don't wanna bend anything over, press on the PCB board or anything like that. That is now done. Now, now that that's installed, as you can see, it's perfectly flush. We're gonna grab the panel that we took off originally to gain access to the port, place it back in its spot. There we go. Grab that screw, put it back in the hole. Screw it on. Now when you're screwing this, take your time. Boom, there, see that? It's not turning anymore. Mm. I'm not gonna twist anymore, perfect. That is now installed. You now have an NVMe SSD installed. Now we grab the side panel. And as you can see, these go into these slots here on the PlayStation. That's the cover for the Blu-ray drive. You place that on top. It'll mold right over, you'll know that it's in the right direction in place. One hand on the right, one hand on the left on top of the panel, and you just wanna push, slide it to the right hand side. That is it. And you should hear a little click, and then you'll know you're done. One, two, three. Oh, or in my case, you will not hear a click, because there we go, one sec. Boom, done. That's it. You've upgraded the storage on your PlayStation 5. It really is that easy. Um, any question guys, post them on the comment section below. Um, 
hopefully this is just showing you how easy it really is to do that with the ps5 it's not that hard um, you literally all you need is a screwdriver and a compatible drive here being the aorus 7000s nvme ssd gen 4 what i will do for you guys is um in the comment section below there is a playstation 5 mega thread on reddit um, with all the listed drives and performance speeds that are compatible with the current beta version of the firmware um, with that i will link it in the description box below you can go to that link and go through um, a lot of the people in that thread are really great people who've taken the time to buy a whole bunch of different drives test the speeds report back any compatibility issues heating issues etc and it'll be in the description box below use that as your buying guide and then out of those compatible drives whatever is your regional equivalent best in price for capacity go with that you don't need the most expensive you don't need to go to cheapest you can go with any of them because they're all compatible okay guys now if there's any questions at all post them in the comments section below i'm happy to engage with you guys help you out um and yeah uh, hopefully you found this video informative and helpful um if you have hit the thumbs up button um comment share it with your friends who are interested in upgrading the ps5's um, ssd and if they don't feel confident they can just see how easy it is in this video and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed thank you guys and i'll catch you in the next video bye